Well, welcome to another Sports Extra feature where we uh, chat with uh, a sports person and administrator uh, talking about their life experiences and what they're doing now. I'm your host, Arui Mbochakureka. And remember, Sports Extra without an E. And you can catch up with this particular interview on our YouTube channel. Of course, we're also going to be posting it up on our Facebook page. So if you would like, please like, share, subscribe, comment we live off of your comments we live off of your your likes and shares so please uh, let's do that as well i'm your host ruimbo chakoreka and today i'm joined by a long time friend a very amazing person and a wonderful person to always talk to uh, every time and that's the zimbabwe women's cricket captain marianne musonda marianne always great uh, to be chatting with you and welcome to sports extra thank you thank you for having me all right so as you can see she's always jolly good let's see after the interview she's still smiling i've got big questions <laughs> but in any case let's uh talk about uh the start of the journey uh you are the women's cricket captain now but that uh, didn't always happen she didn't come out of her mother's womb just being the women's cricket captain the journey clearly started from somewhere where did the journey start uh, the journey started at Kwekwe High, uh, that's where I went to for my O level. Um, so I had always been an athlete, so ever since junior school, I went to Hemengamaina Primary School in Waterfalls. Um, played most of the sports, actually, uh, I would be called from class to just go join any sport in our oh, itself. Wow. That's how, you know, sporty I was, well I think. Um, and then I went to high school. Um, in Form 1, I was playing hockey, basketball, volleyball, netball and um, I think one afternoon we were playing hockey and I think because of the hockey stick and how I was swinging for something that the, the cricket coach supported me and you know he asked me to join cricket um, and I went to join just one session and you know I fell in love with it, um, all the intricacies of cricket. Uh, then on, um, I actually never went back to hockey. I stuck with cricket, um, and there wasn't any girls team, so I was playing with the boys the whole time. So that's that's how it started. Well, that definitely uh, made you into the kind of person that you are gritty out there on the field, very competitive and very, uh, you know, strong. So surely the changeover from hockey into into cricket wasn't bad or it wasn't uh, much of a challenge, especially when I look at the director of cricket, Hamilton Masagata. He also played some hockey, even made the under-18 Zim squad uh, back in high school. So clearly hand eye coordination is, is something key right yeah it is um from maneuvering the, the the hockey ball with the hockey stick and swinging it and then now uh when it comes to cricket getting a cricket ball and still swinging with the with the cricket bat i think that transition wasn't too difficult for me so yeah i think that's that's why that's why the transition was easy and probably that's how why i fell in love with cricket that the cricket bat is quite thick as well mm. the hockey stick is quite thin yeah so there was no way of missing <laughs> exactly. it anyway <laughs> Wow. Well, at, at least you didn't miss many. I mean, back in my high school days, I, I missed quite yeah. a lot. <laughs> but in any case, um, so that journey then uh, goes on. Uh, was there ever a time that you felt you had a ceiling in terms of then pursuing uh, a cricket? Because you were playing with boys, there was yeah. no girls cricket yeah. and, and everything. So how were you able then to transition from that to move? into the franchise cricket now that you play locally and things like that um so fortunately in form two um we started playing uh, provincial cricket and uh, i got selected into the midlands squad uh the provincial squad um so that's how then i became a provincial player you know played with the other ladies from the from from school and outside of school and that's when we also formed our team at Kwekwe High the girls team um, always training with the boys also so um, it was a good thing I think it didn't take too much time but between me learning the sport and me actually trying to compete at provincial level um, and then from the province uh, then ZC introduced uh, the squads uh, and also the first tour which was going to be in 2006 uh, to Kenya, so I think dating back to the provinces, that's been that's how that those are the steps I, I, I took. All right, uh, quite interesting. And now, obviously, as the journey has you know developed over time, how was it then making your debut playing for 
for Zimbabwe. I know there were different debuts. There, were, <laughs> yeah. there was the debut of playing for Zimbabwe and, yeah. and we're going to talk about the other debut as well. But okay. um, just getting your first cap playing for the women's cricket side, uh, how intimidating yeah. was that and who were some of the women that had already gone into the side that were you were looking up to and were your inspiration? Um, so... I think debuting, playing, that was the boys. Mm -hmm. So everyone was intimidating because they were guys anyway. So I, I was yeah. just trying to have fun and to learn and you know, uh, not not overthink a lot. Um, and then when we when we then got to provinces, I understood that most of the women they were uh, were learning was the same way I was. So it didn't give me too many goosebumps. I think the only time I really felt like. Uh, you know what probably I am outside of my depth here was when I was playing uh, Mashona Lane mm. uh, because they already had a strong uh, structured uh, club cricket going on so there was OH um, there was sports club there was Takashinga you know so there were a couple of uh, players who had played more cricket than I had um, and so probably when we played against them that's when I felt like oh, you know what I think it's, it's quite difficult with the ladies as well um, but yeah, I was young because I was enthusiastic about sports, um, competition was something I was used to um, and I always found myself coming out of tough situations so I just knew, you know what, I just need to stick it out. Um, but yeah, in terms of intimidation, I think because I was so used to competition, um, it really didn't affect my game a lot. I understood, you know, if I can do it, I'm going to do it. If I can't, I'm not going to be able to do it, so yeah. Alright, quite yeah. interesting. Um, all right, so let's transition from that. You now play provincial cricket and you're now doing really well. Let's now talk about the national team setup. So yeah. when was the first time that you actually played a match for uh, the Zimbabwe women's cricket team? Um, okay. In 2006, the, the, the first time, you know, the Lady Chevrons or the Zimbabwe women's cricket team taught, went to Kenya as a rookie. I actually didn't play any games, so I got in because one senior guy had uh, had an injury on field. So I went in, you know, just buzzing with, with energy. So for me, that's all I needed to do. I knew, you know, I, nothing is <laughs> being expected of me. I'm just fielding, just <laughs> take catches and stop uh, So that was the first time. And then the next time was um, under 19. Uh, and that should have been in 2007. Yeah, I uh, went to South Africa, had a very strong side. We played the girls week. Um, in South Africa and you know we had a lot of fun especially playing with the same age also seeing that so I think we were, I think there were about eight provinces in South Africa and we were the ninth team and we actually quite dominated that tournament I think we we're in the top two or so um, and so for me it gave me a lot of confidence you know that's all I needed that's all the team needed you know at that point before actually going international team and then from the under 19s um, 2009 yeah, I think that was in Kenya for Africa qualifiers. Um, so the journey just kept on going on like that. But luckily, I was I, I wasn't in a place where I was thrown in the deep end, so to speak. I was privileged to go through certain stages for me to learn until you know the time had come for me to play for the national team. Oh, yeah. Interesting, interesting times indeed. So let's now go to the other side of things, and I know this one is is. Uh, generally uh, a, a dark space uh, to talk about but uh, as Zimbabwe cricket we went through a suspension of course yeah. we're out of it now yeah, yeah, yeah. and things like that but it was a very tough time uh, for for women's cricket in particular because yeah, yeah. a lot of doors had actually opened up uh, for yourself yeah. as well as for other cricketers as well um, how have you been able to get past that particularly from a, a mentality point of view to now continuously be inspired to continue to play for Zimbabwe women's cricket um, I think the, the, in, the, in that moment obviously there's a lot of confusion um, there's a lot of disappointment um, because of, of the expectations you have and you're actually envisioning yourself at the qualifiers um, at that global tournament you know you're actually seeing yourself doing all that and then all of a sudden it's not going to happen um, but my the, the biggest thing I've taken from that experience is just a change of perce uh, perception um, I think the way we perceive things is very very important uh, if we allow things to beat us down then you know you lose hope so I think 
the biggest thing for me is hope you know i just held on to hope okay this has happened worst things have happened i always tell myself the worst thing that could happen to me is death mm -hmm. um, and nobody died so she loves life doesn't she <laughs> <laughs> so, so if i'm going to wake up tomorrow it means that something might come up you know so that's the, that's the kind of mentality I just try to have and also try to have conversations around the, um, the changing room to say, guys, you know what, this is beyond our control. Um, let's just dust this off our shoulders, dust off, and then continue, you never know what happens. And then in a few months, we were then given the ODI status, which we had to work for. So, you know, things have a way of working out if you just try to be positive, try not to be bitter, because there's certain things you can't control. You just need to, you know, continue smiling and hoping. All right. Well, there, there, there are a number of things that we obviously have to talk about and we're obviously going to take it in order. First came the captaincy yeah. for the women's side. Yeah. Uh, then next came the status. And then afterwards, yeah, we're going to talk about the big one. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, let's talk about the captaincy coming on your shoulders. Yeah. Uh, tell us maybe from a woman's perspective, because as men, we have got a perception. Ah, women are difficult to deal with. Mm -hmm. But let's hear it from a woman. Dealing with women. How, how interesting is that, um, that space? Being a captain of a women's cricket side. Um, I think it's uh, like you're saying, it's a perception that women are difficult. Mm -hmm. I think human beings are difficult. <laughs> In general. In general, I think human beings are difficult. Um, and so going in, I did not carry the, the you know perception that you know it's going to be difficult. Women are going to be difficult. I just thought human beings will be difficult anyway. Um, and so you know, I just told myself I've never been a captain of a national team before. What I've been the captain of provincial side. Um, I've led uh, different sports, basketball, volleyball. I've led. I've led in church, prison worship team. Um, so I had. In, not in the context of, it, of, of cricket, but I had led in other spaces and I had led women in other spaces. Um, so it, it, I had to learn on the job, most of it. I had to learn each and every individual um, on the job, what they like, what they don't like, how they want to be spoken to. And when we're in crunch time, you know, when it's under pressure, when everyone is under the pump, how can I talk to this person so that I can get the best out, out of them? Um, and so that's what I just did. And I allowed myself to fail. I, I also allowed my team to fail and to learn every time and always to have a positive attitude. And it's a work in progress, to be honest. Yeah, definitely you've led them in, in, in quite a number of uh, interesting milestones that you've achieved over time and also some of the disappointing moments as well that you would have wanted the team to perform at a higher level but getting ODI status and then playing your first series and then knocking that 100, we were watching that 100 uh, from the office and I can tell you I mean there was a buzz in the office <laughs> where, wow. where we were working and and we were saying look she's about to get there all right Marianne it's 98 it's 99 don't, <laughs> well, no, I, don't. I actually feel like <laughs> most of the people I've spoken to yeah. you guys were more nervous than I was <laughs> oh yes I was not even nervous <laughs> I was not thinking about it mm, yeah but yeah. it was like 98 99 okay just the one run don't look at the boundary <laughs> oh, please don't yeah. but yeah. you got to that hun uh, hundred I mean were there any butterflies especially when you finally raise that bat and you know take off the helmet that's like the key point in cricket especially as a as a batter how was that feeling <laughs> you know it's, it's 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 interesting because people always talk about the butterfly thing and everything on the day i felt nothing <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, it's not a thing of me feeling nothing because it's not a big thing. It was a huge thing. But I think I was in the moment, but not in my century moment. I was the moment of the team, you know. So my target was just we need to get a 254. We need five runs and over. So um, I think when I continuously did that, I didn't see my score ticking that much. I knew, okay, okay, almost. Well, there's one there, you know, but we have to keep I going. need to get to 254. Um, I need to stick around uh, till the team get there. So in then, if I finally happened, then I was like, okay, big deal, you know. <laughs> yeah. let's but hey, let's that. finish, you know. Yeah, but still, let's finish, you know. Mm. So only after it dawned on me that, you know, it's actually such a big deal. Um, the next day when journal other journalists and reporters were, you know, phoning me off the hook and I knew okay all right then so yeah um, 
Yeah, that's how it happened. <laughs> wow, imagine. I mean, I haven't scored a century in my life, but it is. <laughs> she does and she takes it like a piece of cake. But uh, it was an amazing moment and we all celebrated with you. And I'm sure you saw the newspapers, the yeah. social media handles are washed with all of that. But yeah. um, I mean, bigger steps and bigger moments have now come for you. Yeah. You're going to be tra traveling to the Fair Break Invitational T20 Tournament. I mean, when that phone call came through, was it a surprise? Was it a shock? What was it like? It was a shock. <laughs> um, it was a shock because I thought I'm, I'm playing an ODI and this is a T20 tournament. So, you know, what really did they see? Uh, but yeah, I got a call from someone who's big in, in women's cricket, you know, and I thought, okay, this is actually, it means probably I've really done well. So, you know, instead of, you know, how I, when I scored the 100, you know, that under, underwhelming feeling, <laughs> this time I was actually overwhelmed. Um, and I, it made me grateful, to be honest. It made me, I was humbled um, that probably times when you perform and we're thinking we're doing other things, other people are watching, you know, and other people will appreciate um, how you go about things and they would want to take you on board. So that's just how I felt, that's how I still feel. Um, you know, then looking at um, the player, the kind of players that are there, like my team has got big, big names, I don't want to lie. You know, so it's, it's like, wow, I'm also part of that, which means that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm also a big deal. Yeah. Um, you know, in a humble way, of course. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, it only means, you know, you just need to keep working. You don't know who's watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, oh, okay, so as we're coming to the end of this, um, I mean, just over the weekend, uh, Australia did a demolition job at the oh, Women's yeah. oh, World yeah. Cup. Oh, yeah, no, that was carnage. <laughs> a demolition job from yeah. start to finish. Yeah. I think Bangladesh, who were playing their first World Cup, are the only ones that gave them any form of competition, yeah. Yeah. you know, keeping them to a relatively low score yeah, and yeah. taking a couple of wickets off of them. Yeah. But uh, when we now look at Australia and what they've done with yeah. women's cricket, yeah. how much of a feeling do you have that these are things that we can also achieve on a local basis? Um, you know what's interesting, Rimbo? Most of my friends or even my teammates, when we were watching cricket um, during this World Cup, I'm um, even like texting and having conversations about, you know, uh, some of, you know, the unique things that will be happening in games. We feel like we're not far off. We feel like they make the same mistakes we do, just maybe not as often. Um, so it gives us a little bit of confidence that, you know, we are, we are, not, we are not too far off. There are just certain things we need to work on. And when I talk about certain things we need to work on, I was, I was reading an article and, you know, one thing that kept on coming up was, you know, the five-year plan, the five-year plan. So it, it turns out that they have been working towards this for five years. So imagine, you know, giving yourself, your team five years. Um, so you're giving the team the best facilities, um, you're investing in their game, um, medically they are sorted, uh, they've got equipment, they've got diet the, wise, the di diet wise, everything is sorted. Uh, when you talk about the high tech stuff, the analysis, they've got everything, you know, and it's five years. So definitely you will have to improve if, if you have all those resources. It, it, there's no way that you can work hard with all those resources and not perform. It's, it's impossible. No, definitely it's impossible. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things that we hope will become possible is um, you know uh, your your side being able to qualify for a World Cup, whether it be T20 or whether it's going to be the the 50 over World Cup. Well, we missed out on the 50 over World Cup. Yeah. 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 Well, no, we start again. Yeah. You yeah. know, COVID, not. Blah. But anyway, done dusted. Yeah. That one is under the rug. Yeah. Um, next, we'll be focusing on the what T20 World T20, Cup yeah. buyers that are coming through. Yeah. We have clearly dominated the the African space. Yeah. But it's just that step to yeah. to to get there. Yeah. Uh, what would you say as we leave this interview that you you most probably feel that the girls need to have as a mentality for us to just get over that last step? I think the biggest thing is when you know when I was when I was saying that when we when we talk we feel like we're not far off. That's just the mentality we need to have. Um, most of the times the mistakes we make probably are because we are thinking that these people are world class and we are too far behind and it's not possible. But then when you when you see it happening, you see but it's possible. I've played this shot before. I think I can do this. So I think it's 
just staying in that mind frame of saying I'm going to work as hard as, as I can I'm going to give myself you know to my team um, you know I'm just going to be positive and I'm going to, to play games to the best of my abilities to put the team forward you know the rest will take care of itself that's what I think all right well we do hope that the rest will take care of itself yeah. and we are rooting for you guys thank you ladies and friends Thanks. all the way but well that brings us uh, to the end of this discussion that we've had with the zimbabwe women's cricket captain marianne musonda as we did mention before she's going to the fair break invitational t20 tournament and she's gonna have a lovely time and hopefully bring back sweets and chocolates we love that we've got sweet <laughs> tea here at sports extra but um, <laughs> always a pleasure marianne uh, having yeah. a chat with with you and uh, just hearing your cricket brain and amazing cricket brain and leadership uh, brain we didn't get to talk about her education don't worry we'll save that one <laughs> for another time because she's ridiculously intelligent ridiculously intelligent. <laughs> she knows it but thank you so much Megan. thank you for having me thanks guys all right so we are going to be bringing you another sports extra feature and don't worry she's going to be coming back she's got more stories to tell so make sure you stay locked on to our YouTube channel, uh, like, share, subscribe on Facebook, on Instagram. Our handle is at Sports Extra Zim. Remember the extra is without an E. And then on our YouTube channel, it is Sports Extra ZW. And you can catch up with all of the content that we've been posting uh, over a time. But my name is Rumba Chakreka. I'm your host. Until next time, cheerio. Thank you.